Why can't I find it? Find what? The end to the string. You mean this? Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about Christmas as we learn how the light of the world got here in the first place. I sure don't know how I ended up here. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about Christmas, which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. We're also still decorating our Christmas tree. Hey, should we plug these in? Let's light it up. Yo, that's awesome. You know, these lights remind me of something. An experiment? It's kind of a mix between art and electronics. So, illuminate us. <laughs> Let's make it. For this experiment, we're going to need a graphite pencil, a piece of paper, a nine volt battery, some tape, and a simple light emitting diode, or LED for short. Wait, LED is short for a light emitting diode? Diode. Diode. I thought it was for live electronic dance music. So what is a diode? A diode is a one-way street for an electric current. When the electric current is flowing the right direction, a light-emitting diode will light up. So we're gonna make this diode light up with this? Because I kind of think that would be a Christmas miracle. Let's start by drawing something Christmassy. I think I will draw a Christmas tree. Okay, I'll draw an advent candle. So we have to leave a place for the LED and a space where the battery goes. Hmm. I think I'm going to leave a space at the top of my Christmas tree and at the bottom of my oh, Christmas oh, tree. Oh, the, the LED will be your star. Brilliant, right? I see what you did there. Um, I think I can leave space at the top of my candle for an LED flame. So the graphite is actually conductive, which means it'll carry an electric current from the power source to the LED. And our power source is the battery. Yes. Almost done? No. <laughs> so that we can have a stronger electric current, it's very important that you make the graphite a little more thick. Like an inch thick? Mm, about half an inch. <laughs> Almost done? All done. <laughs> okay, now we need to label the positive and negative sides. The right side can be positive, and the left side can be negative. Okay. Now let's tape our light emitting diodes down. Light emitting diodes, that is just fun to say. The longer side of the LED is the positive side. All right. And once we have them taped down, we can get our nine volt batteries ready. Hold on, lights down. Three. Two. One. It worked! It's amazing how one little sketch can light up the page. Speaking of light, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. God had a plan to bless the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But God's people kept turning away. At last, they were attacked by foreign nations. Even in this time of trouble, God spoke through prophets and promised to send a rescuer. Then, after hundreds of years, God sent an angel to an ordinary girl named Mary and told her she was going to have a very special baby. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Mary and her husband Joseph began making plans for the new baby. But the land where God's people lived had been taken over by the Romans. Because of this, the Jewish people had to pay taxes to the Roman government. From time to time, the Roman ruler would order that all the people be counted and their names recorded. This is called a census. More people, more money. <laughs> Count them all so we can squeeze every last denarius from them. All persons in the province of Judea must return to their family home to be counted for the Roman census. When Joseph heard this, he was a little nervous. 
Joseph wasn't too excited to tell Mary she had to go on a journey when she was going to have a baby. But they had no choice. And do you know where Joseph's hometown was? Of course, Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph were living in Nazareth. Bethlehem was about 80 miles away. 80 miles is a long way to walk, especially when you're ready to have a baby. The journey would have taken close to a week, so they would have had to sleep on the ground at night. How are you feeling? Let's say camping isn't my favorite right now. <laughs> it's likely that Joseph had family living in Bethlehem. He and Mary may have planned to stay with relatives when they arrived, but once they got there, no one had any beds available. And so Joseph and Mary ended up in the only place there was still room, with the animals. Imagine sleeping in a small room with a bunch of farm animals. It was kind of like that. And while they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. He's so perfect. We'll call him Jesus. Mary swaddled baby Jesus and laid him in the feeding trough, or manger, because there was no cradle. In the midst of all that mess, Mary and Joseph chose joy. They knew that God had kept the promise to send a rescuer. And as they stared at Jesus, they knew he would be great. He would be called the Son of the Most High, and his kingdom would never end. The end. Or is it a new beginning? How incredible is that? The savior of the whole world has to sleep in a feeding trough. I bet the cows were a little confused. <laughs> no kidding. So what's our part in the story? Mary and Joseph chose joy in a difficult situation. They saw how God had fulfilled a promise and they trusted that God was at work. Jesus is the light of the world. Because of Jesus, our broken relationship with God can be restored. And one day, God will make everything right again. So just like Mary, we can choose joy in the midst of our own messy lives. Like when your Christmas lights are tangled, you can choose joy. Or maybe someone gives you socks for Christmas. I like socks. You can still choose joy. How about when my mom makes a meal I don't really like? Or you lose your voice and you can't sing in your Christmas concert. Both great times to choose joy. And Jesus can help us do that. Absolutely. When you choose to follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to be with you. Joy is actually a gift from the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is our connection back to God. Sounds like you've got it. See you next time. Oh, and Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. So here's the thing. You can have joy because God sent Jesus. He is the light of the world. And even if your Christmas lights are a little tangled, you can still choose joy. Mind if I shed some light on the situation? Please help. You betcha. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time, time. and Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.